So today we are going to start uh, cash and liquidity management. Uh, we will try to cover the introductory part uh, of cash and liquidity management. Yes, it's working. Uh, you see that when we talk about cash and liquidity management, the first common questions uh, question is that why we need cash? Everybody knows why we need cash. But as a student of working capital management, we need to clarify the reasons for holding cash differently. Uh, because we are expert, we are advisor of different organizations. We advise them whether they need cash or not. And if they need cash, then what should be the right amount of cash? What percent of total asset will be cash? Uh, these, we, we have to guide them. We have to advise them. And that's why... Uh, we can't explain why we need cash, why we hold cash uh, like general public. Uh, we know that as a general public, we know that we need cash to bear our day-to-day -day expenditure. We need cash uh, to protect our future. We need cash to save for the future. So these way you can explain or you can find out thousands and thousands of reasons behind holding cash. But as a student of working capital management, what points we can use to explain the reasons behind holding cash? The first one is a speculative motive. You see that now we are talking like business student. We are business student. A speculative motive means what? If we have cash, we can avail opportunity. We can avail opportunity of gaining profit, of making profit. A speculative motive means if I have cash, if I found some goods, raw materials, products with a cheaper price, we can buy these and later we can sell it with a profit. So this is called a speculative motive. We hold cash to take advantage of unexpected opportunities. And that's why people who have really a good amount of cash, they're always making money, they're always making profit. And it's called, when you have money, money makes money. What does it mean? It, it means if you have money, you can take advantage of unexpected opportunities. Uh, you can buy everything cheaper when the price is cheap and then you can store and then you can sell with a high profit. The second motive is precautionary motive. We know the world is very much uncertain and the business world is, is really more uncertain. We need to consider so many factors uh, in this business world. It's not that I'm very good in purchase and sale and then I can make profit. No, you need to consider thousands and thousands of variables uh, under environmental analysis. So precautionary motive means we hold cash in case of emergencies. So you see that if you have cash, you can face emergencies. If you have cash, uh, you can take decisions uh, under emergencies. Uh, when there is a contingency, some incident happened, even occurred, unexpected expected problems arise. So only cash can really help you. This is called precautionary motive. Then transaction motive. We hold cash to pay the day-to-day -day bills. We buy, so we need cash. We pay a mobile bill. Uh, we pay water bill, electricity bill, gas bill. Uh, we pay wages every day to our employees, to our workers. So these way we have many transactions related to cash. So you see that you know the answer why we hold cash, but the presentation is different here. 
because we are the student of business administration and also we are studying finance. Uh, we are studying working capital management. And, and the next one, trade off between opportunity cost of holding cash relative to the transaction cost of converting marketable securities to cash for transactions. Uh, what it is, yes, instead of cash, you can hold marketable securities. You can have a stock, you can have bond, but still, if you have a stock and bond, these are also very much nearest to cash. But the problem is you can't convert these securities to cash whenever you need. You can't convert immediately because you need to sell these stock and bond to transform these to cash. So that's why still you need some cash all the time you have. And moreover, uh, there are opportunity costs. If you have a stock and bond, what opportunity you have? If you have cash, what opportunity you have? So many cases, if you have cash instantly, you can take decision to buy and sell. You can take decision to invest. And that's why many cases uh, you need cash. Yes, you can invest in a stock. That is a good decision. You can invest in bond because they're very much nearest to cash. They are really liquid, but at least you need more time than cash. So you have to, you have to think about trade-off that what percent of your daily expenditures uh, you will bear using cash and what percent uh, you don't need to carry cash, bear cash because you have a stock and whenever you use the secondary market, use your broker uh, to sell a stock and bond, then you can convert these stock and bond to cash. We need to understand some terminologies under this chapter, cash management. One is called float. So what is float? Float is the difference between cash balance recorded in the cash account and the cash balance recorded at bank. And the difference is called float because we are finance student, working capital management student. So we need to understand this. We record our cash uh, inflows and outflows in our cash account. So you know how to prepare cash account. It, it is a ledger. So where you have in one side, all the receipt and another side, all the payment. And these way you record your everyday cash receipt and payment, cash inflows and outflows. And, and, all, and, and, and you are not keeping this money in your pocket. Yes, you have this is cash account. You are not keeping in your pocket. What you are doing, you are not keeping all this cash in your drawer. Moreover, you are depositing all this money in a bank account. So you have some calculation in the bank. If you cross check what records you have in the bank and what you have in the account, if you find the difference or gap, and that is known as float. So you need to determine the float that will help you to always continue correct calculation, correct transactions, correct recording. Another one is called disbursement float. Generated when a firm writes check. So how firms pay? When you want to pay securely, at that case is obviously you use check. Uh, if you want to give payment to any supplier, uh, you will not pay cash. What you will do, you will use check. So disbursement float occurs when a firm writes check. What it is, you see the difference, available balance at bank and the difference between book balance. So if the result is greater than zero, that means available balance at bank is more than your book balance. That is the account, the cash account you are maintaining. If you find that in your bank account, 
you have balance, more balance than your book balance. And, and if, if the difference is greater than zero, we say disbursement float. The second one is collection float. What it is, check receipt increase book balance before the bank credits the account. Now remember what will happen. If you receive a check, uh, it's simple, just try to understand. If you receive a check from any party, when you receive the check, you just consider that you have received the money. So what will happen? You will record these in your cash account. Automatically, your cash will increase. But remember, it's still, uh, uh, your bank balance uh, uh, is not changed because you have to deposit the check to the bank and the check will clear uh, today or tomorrow. And then the money will, uh, will be attached uh, with your bank balance. So cash check received increased book balance here, book balance before the bank credits the account. So you see that before the bank credits the account, so now what will happen? Available balance at bank and the book balance differences, if it is less than zero, then that is called collection float. So one is float, we are defining the gap. Then we define float into two. One is disbursement float and another one is collection float. How you can remember simply, available bank balance and book balance. So consider two balances and find out the gap between these two balances. If the gap is positive, that is called disbursement flow. And if the gap is negative, that is called collection float. And where's the net float? You have disbursement float and you have collection float when you together add both float, we can say this is net float. So as a working capital uh, management student, you need to understand when you are going to manage cash. So several situations may occur. And that's why a float, this terminology is really important. The difference between cash balance recorded in the cash account and the cash balance recorded at the bank. And what will be the situation in your ba balance at bank may be more than book balance. That is called disbursement flow. And if the uh, balance at bank is less than book balance, uh, the difference is negative, then we can say it is collection flow. And when you add both, so together we have net, float. Now you have one example. What example you have just see? You have $3,000 in your checking account and you just deposited $2,000 and wrote a check for $2,500. Now this is a job for the student today. So what is the disbursement flow? What is the collection flow? What is the net flow? What is your book balance? And what is your available balance? I am waiting for your answer. Take support from any sources and give me the feedback. So dear students, uh, again, that was your problem. Uh, you have $3,000 in your checking account. so. You just deposited dollar two thousand. So when you receive money, and that is what kind of float when you receive a collection flow. Collection flow, and then you route a check. That is your paying. So when you route a check, that is disbursement flow. Now find out the relationship and calculate the gap. You will find what is disbursement flow, what is collection flow, and what is the net flow, and what is your book balance, what is your available balance already. Uh, someone calculated very rightly. Uh, now, 
we have example more example i'm not going to uh, check uh, today's um, many uh, slides or powerpoint presentation and just uh, this one is the last one uh, you had already meet them uh, you are tired and also you continue a class so uh, you have another uh, problem you see that size of float depends on the dollar amount and the time delay so there is uh, information for you guys What's the information that size of float depends on the dollar amount and the time delay. So again, you have to remember when we talk about delay, it is mailing time plus processing delay plus availability delay. So you see that when we go to the bank, we just see that we are depositing the check and then we are waiting uh, for uh, our balance. We wait to see that whether the check we have deposited, that money is added with my balance. So why it happened? It, it happened because there is a processing delay and there is availability delay as well. So delay means here, your mailing time and then processing time and then availability delay. You have to remember, uh, if you don't have uh, available money in your account, then obviously it will take less time or more time. If you don't have enough money in your account, so what will happen? Or if you deposit a check of a third party, uh, so check So she a deposit kulle, che check diye chulo tadar account er jodesh chobori man taka nai. Tara jodi shomoy chaye banker kache. You will get on time. So now, suppose you mail a check for $1,000. So you mail a check for $1,000 and it takes three days to reach its destination. You know, in my country also, we are mailing check. Uh, you know, we have Asa Puribahon, Shundorban, and also uh, some uh, multinational companies. So we are also mailing check in Bangladesh. So when we mail a check, uh, it may take shortest possible time, shorter period of time, or it may take some additional time because of some environmental issues. So we have information, it takes three days to reach its destination, one day to process, and one day before the bank will make the cash available. That is the availability, availability days. That bank also take, you see that bank also take one more day uh, uh, to confirm that the cash is available in your account. So these way we can calculate delay. So mailing time is here, processing delay is here, availability uh, delay is here. So combine all this delay then you will get your delay, three plus one plus one, and you will find a uh, four. So uh, what uh, is the average daily flow? Because this is delay, you have calculated delay. Now, if you want to calculate average daily float, assuming 30 days, months, then the calculation is simple, delay three plus one plus one and into uh, 1000 divided by 30. 1000, this is 1000 divided by 30. You will get 166.67. That is called average daily float. Daily float, considering 30 day as month. You can go for method two, so I'm not discussing method two at this moment, uh, but it's still, you know, that there is a five into 1000. Uh, so plus uh, uh, this is uh, rest of the day, 25th divided by 30 uh, into dot dot. So these way, we, I'm not going to checking these today. So we have already learned about uh, method one and the calculation is so simple. So dear student, 